Hi everyone, my name is Louis Hanslick and I've been principal trumpet with the Riverside Symphony since 2002. I was born in Nebraska but uh, grew up in Iowa and uh, after attending uh, the University of Iowa for college, uh, I moved to New York City to continue my studies at the Juilliard School. Uh, looking back, uh, you might think a musical career for me was uh, perhaps inevitable. Uh, my parents were both public school music teachers, uh, band directors specifically. So I was always at a school concert or listening into a lesson uh, at home. Uh, the trumpet is a member of the brass family. And as you may already know, uh, all instruments require some sort of vibration in order to produce sound. For the brass family, and the trumpet specifically, our lips are what vibrate. You take a nice, easy breath, bring your lips together, not too tight, and gently release the air across the middle of your lips to produce a buzz. And try it again. This part of the brass instrument, right here, is called the mouthpiece. And the mouthpiece is what uh, focuses uh, the combination of the airstream and the lip vibration, or what we call a buzz. But next, uh, we place the mouthpiece uh, into the trumpet, like that. You take a nice easy breath again, and you release the air and buzz or vibrate the lips. Uh, the trumpet, uh, in theory, does the rest of the work for you. It focuses the vibration uh, even more than before and makes that characteristic brass instrument sound uh, that we all know so well. Other parts of the trumpet include the lead pipe, the uh, tuning slide, which goes in and out to assist with intonation with, of the instrument and playing in tune with others. Uh, the basic uh, tubing of the instrument that you see that goes uh, all around here. Oh, the water key right here, also known as the spit valve. And the final flare of the basic tubing here, which is called the bell. Brass instruments are made um, of a soft metal called, uh, not surprisingly, uh, brass, which in its raw state is uh, kind of a dingy brown color, uh, which is why instrument makers and mine specifically, uh, put a thin coating of lacquer or gold, or in my case, uh, silver on top of the brass metal to make it look a little more beautiful. But it, it, in my case, it looks like my uh, silver plating needs a little bit of polish. Trumpeters in orchestras and bands uh, are often assigned uh, music that is characterized as heroic or even celebratory. Uh, composers like to write a lot of fanfares for us, although we do get the melody uh, on occasion. However, in more modern styles such as jazz, trumpeters get more melodic and even soul lines. Like this favorite melody of mine by the great jazz trumpeter Lee Morgan called Siora. When I play this, you'll hear the trumpet in this music as more melodic uh, than you might expect, and perhaps even vocal.
A skilled trumpeter can articulate or rapidly produce a repetition of notes in slow and in super fast succession. We often call this tonguing on brass instruments. A speed and evenness of the articulation, all while maintaining a full and easy sound, are essential in much of the music that we play. Here's a demonstration of three basic articulation or tonguing techniques, single, double, and triple. I'd like to play a few famous trumpet melodies uh, from the orchestra. Uh, melodies that I've played and enjoyed uh, multiple times in my career and are quite meaningful to me. Uh, the first is by the composer Igor Stravinsky and comes from his piece, The Soldier's Tale, which is a musical drama uh, of sorts uh, for a small chamber ensemble and narrator. Uh, as I recall, the trumpet is representative of the soldier in the story that accompanies the music, and uh, who in the piece makes a deal with the devil The final thing I'd like to introduce you to, which is very unique to the trumpet, are mutes. Now the word mute in this context means to change the sound, and we have numerous mutes at our disposal that we can use to change or alter the sound of the trumpet in different ways. Uh, I'll demonstrate a few of them for you now. My favorite change of sound, however, is playing a type of trumpet known as a flugelhorn, which, uh, rather than being a cylindrical instrument from beginning to end, is actually cone-shaped or conical from the beginning of the trumpet to the bell flare, which produces a more mellow sound, much like a French horn. Here is a beautiful melody by the Argentinian composer named Astor Piazzolla. Now, Piazzolla himself uh, was a bandoneon player and composed beautiful tango melodies, bridging this traditional music of his country with European styles of classical music. This melody called Oblivion was written for a film score originally and to me is a perfect vehicle for the flugelhorn.
Finally, a, a work that also holds a strong memory for me. I once flew to Hong Kong uh, to play this piece in a concert uh, with the Australian Chamber Orchestra. Uh, and I was only in Hong Kong for 48 hours, believe it or not. Uh, I flew to Hong Kong. Uh, I rehearsed with the group at least once. Uh, I played the concert. And then the next morning, uh, flew directly home to New York. The piece by the composer uh, Shostakovich uh, is called Piano Concerto Number no. 1, but it's also known as the Concerto for Piano and Trumpet. It's a piece for piano, trumpet, and string orchestra. Both the piano and trumpet parts have a very busy soloistic role. And this excerpt uh, for trumpet uh, features the instrument in the height of what I might call pure uh, Shostakovich sarcasm. Being a musician uh, requires tremendous dedication, uh, practice, and attention. Uh, arguably uh, equal to uh, the dedication required of, of many athletes you might admire. Yes, uh, you know, it takes sacrifice. Uh, it can be a lot of work. Uh, but there's nothing uh, like the feeling of performing a concert for an audience, knowing uh, that you likely brought joy uh, to someone's life or you simply took them on a musical journey uh, that allowed them to escape, escape with you uh, in the moment during that concert. Uh, when that happens, uh, every ounce of effort, to me, uh, suddenly becomes worth it. So I want to thank you so much for watching this program, and I hope to see you soon at a Riverside Symphony concert. <laughs>